All right, in this Retro Combs episode, I burn myself with a soldering iron, I lose an SD card, a cat contemplates attacking a 3D printer, and I create an Arduino-based Tedwino for my Commodore Plus 4. So let's talk about the Tedwino. First of all, what is a Tedwino? Well, the Tedwino is a Tapwino that's been designed for the Commodore TED or 264 series of Commodore computers. A lot of video out there on YouTube that explains what the TED series of Commodore computers are. Basically, they were created by Commodore to be a follow-up to the Commodore 64. They're misunderstood. And if you've been following along in my videos, I've been covering the Plus 4 through a series of chapter-by-chapter user's manual videos. I'd encourage you to check those out if you want to know more about the Plus 4. But one of the things about the Plus 4 that I really like is its unique styling. And so I decided to create a Tapuino with a Plus 4 design aesthetic. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So I've already created a Tapuino. You can see that in a previous video. So the first step for me was to gather all the components. Now, the great thing about it was I had all the components. As a matter of fact, I had to order many of the components in multiples. I have eight of things I'll never use again. I, have, I think I have 36 resistors that I will never need again. So I had plenty of parts, plenty of pieces. Again, I did contemplate when I made my original order that I would be doing a follow-up to the Tapuino video didn't know I was going to call it Ted we know but it actually has worked out well so all the pieces gathered I was ready to get started so once the components were ready what I did was lay them all out and go ahead and try and pre-place the components on the solderable breadboard so what I'm doing is I'm taking everything from the tap we know I'm recreating it on this solderable breadboard before it was a just a standard breadboard so part of the project is to use an Arduino to serve as the brain for our Tapuino or Tedduino. And the Arduino, you get software from Sweet Little Marie's website. All that information will be in the video discussion or check out my previous video again on creating the Tapuino and you load that software onto the Arduino. So what I decided to do was go ahead and load all the software on the Arduino first before soldering it to the breadboard. Then what I did is I took out the old Arduino for my Tapuino project. I placed this new Arduino on that circuit board or in that circuit and just checked it, see if it was working. And then lo and behold, very first try, everything worked fine. So I had a good Arduino, I had a good software package on it. Now I could return back to the breadboard and start figuring out and finalizing the layout of the components on the breadboard. Once I kind of had everything placed, I didn't decide to solder yet. I just bent the lead so that the pieces would hold on to the soldering board. And after that, what I did is I took those pieces and I put it on a sheet of graph paper, or in my case, a notebook uh, that had a dot grid spacing in it. And I started to draw. This helped me with my design process. What was this thing gonna look like? How big was it gonna be? And more importantly, what was the overall dimensions of this thing? And could I actually print this project on my Creality Ender 3, which has a fairly small bed. It's not super tiny, but would I have enough room on that bed to print out the Tapuino case or the Tedduino case? And in this case, I did, pun intended. So once I had everything laid out, I started to design the case. And I did this, first of all, by doing some rough sketches on a sheet of paper, or again, in my notebook. But then I immediately jumped over to SketchUp where the majority or actually all of the designs started to occur. Now I went through several iterations of sketching and moving components to get everything where I wanted. And I have to tell you, uh, I started thinking about this project and I started second guessing my skills on this. This became a lot more complicated project than I imagined. I thought a couple of weekends it would be good to go. I'd create the components, I'd create the case, I'd print everything up and it would just be super. Eh, it wasn't as, as simple as I thought it was going to be, but I got to tell you, through the process, I, more importantly, I learned a lot. Secondly, it was a lot of fun. Was there some frustration in there? Yeah, there was a couple of pieces of frustration in there. But overall, the sheer joy of creating this thing by and large uh, overshadows the negatives of this project. Okay, with all the electronics in place, now it was time to build the 3D model using SketchUp. SketchUp, if you're not familiar with, is a surface modeler. It's not a solid modeler. So you're going to attack it differently than something 
uh, other program that you would from Autodesk, like Autodesk Inventor or even Tinkercad. The free version, which is SketchUp on the web, you can do everything that you're going to see in this video. Now, if you do upgrade, and I happen to have an educator's bundle for SketchUp, you do get some additional 3D modeling tools built in, which will verify your model to make sure that all of your surfaces are create before you export it as an SDL file. Now, you don't need that subscription though. You can create your models in SketchUp and then export them as an STL when you bring them into to your slicer, it too will check to make sure that your model is ready to go. The difference though is sometimes it's nicer to find out before you have a problem rather than after that you have a problem. So you just kind of clean up your workflow a little bit if you have that. But again, you can do all of this for free using SketchUp for the web. So designing the parts was really interesting for me. And the buttons, believe it or not, the smallest little pieces or components of this entire system was the hardest to design because I had to get everything just right so that when you pressed a button, it would push that little micro switch. What a pain in the neck that proved to be a few times, let me tell you. However, again, perseverance, troubleshooting, multiple prints of these things, let me tell you, and I finally got the buttons I needed. Now, interestingly, they're not individual buttons. It started out as a design where they were all going to be individual buttons, but now it's all one piece printed and it has a small little piece that holds them together. And that's much like the 80s toys of their time, which in some ways, uh, this is perfectly appropriate. You press one button, they all kind of move, but there's just enough push on that micro switch on that one that when you press down, the other three don't activate. So it's kind of perfect. It's kind of got a good 80s kind of feel and sound to it. And you'll see that when I reveal the Tedduino. Now, the other important part about the Tedduino was it had to incorporate those really cool fins from the Plus 4. Those fins, like a 1957 Chevy, it's part of that design that makes that Plus 4 so unique. And so I knew that in the design of the Tedduino, I wanted to incorporate those wonderful fins. And I think I successfully did that. The one thing, though, that was a challenge is would this finned Tedduino actually sit nicely next to a C16 because it doesn't have one. So the only thing tying those two products together, the Tedduino and the C16 is the color. So let's talk about the color a little bit. I didn't have a brown PLA and it appears that the plus four, and correct me if I'm wrong out there, I'm sure people will, the plus four is this really dark brown. So I found a PLA on Amazon, and I'll have a link to that in the companion blog post, that looked online like it was really a dark brown, but when I got it, it was really a lighter brown. That was a little bit disappointing. However, what I did find is, if I get it in just the perfect lighting, it kind of complements. You just don't want to have it outside because you can really tell a difference. So you're going to notice, I played around with some lighting, some colors, so that at least my Tapuino would look more at home next to a C16 or a 264. I think it worked out pretty well. I would like to, though, go back and see if I could find a darker color brown if I were ever to reprint this again. Okay, while printing the case, I returned to the workbench to begin soldering the components to the breadboard. The Arduino was the first challenge. As I mentioned before, I had already loaded the software, but when I put it on the breadboard, because of the Arduino I was using, it had these headers on it. I wasn't going to use those headers. Those headers were perfect when I was working on the regular breadboard, but it wasn't going to work well in my Tedduino case. So what I had to do next was remove those header pins. I had to be very careful too, because I didn't want to harm the Arduino or the connections underneath that were going to be soldered. So I removed those headers and I did another test of that Arduino on my previous Tapuino. When I returned to soldering, that became a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I had to refresh my soldering skills again, break those out. I'm getting pretty good at it. I'm, they're, they're starting to come back. But one of the things I did, as I mentioned at the beginning, I burned myself and it hurt. Let me tell you, well, come to think of it, that thing still hurts. It's, it's still not healed. So I did take one for the team for this project. So be appreciative out there, YouTubers. So I printed the cover and, and as you know, things are always naturally going to go wrong at some point. So I was removing support material from the cover and one of the small little holders that's supposed to hold the LCD in place broke off. It's simple to correct, grab some Gorilla branded super glue. That's my preferred brand of glue, period. Just Gorilla anything is just cool. And I took one little drop, put that back into place, solved all my problems. So 
Gorilla Super Glue or any Super Glue, quite honestly, works extremely well with PLA if you need to make some repairs. Now it was time for the big fun part with the components sold, soldered and the case printed. It was time to assemble everything. I was so excited to give this a shot. This was not my first rodeo assembling parts though. All throughout the process, I would print a part, I would assemble it. I would print a part and I would match it to another part and I would make corrections and fixes. So I felt like I had already assembled this thing, but unsuccessfully about 20 times. However, here at the end, I'm assembling it for the final time and everything is working so well. I was so pleased with the way the electronics holder and the cover mat meshed and kind of snapped fit together. I didn't need glue to hold it together, which was nice. You'll also notice that I printed an angled base. That angled base makes it kind of sit nicely next to the plus four in my case, but also angles up that LCD screen so we can see it when we're sitting down. That printed smoothly. I did accidentally touch that base to a hot glue gun. I used hot glue to hold down the micro SD card and it was still sitting out and I touched that base to it. So there's a little bit of blemish on that angled base. Again, I might come back and print that later. However, after doing all of that, shoving all the wires in there the way they needed to be, everything fit extremely well. I was so pleased. Okay, one of the things you probably noticed as you saw the video was the wire still has the exposed pins on the cable. I decided not to remove those because I still need that cable for my Tapuino. Now, eventually, what I hope to do is get another DIN, get a black, yes, a black cable would look better, better than the gray, and recreate that cable. So that might be another uh, short video for us to look at as I replace that. Now, once everything was put together, I needed to get an SD card in there, and this is where I lost my SD card. I stuck it in there, and it didn't go in the SD card holder. It went above it and into the case, and I went, oh, no, because now it's in that case. Luckily, there's a lot of open space in the bottom. I was able to shake that thing and get it out because I was not going to break that thing back open because if I did, I was sure something was going to break and it wasn't going to work and that's just the way it is. So I shook and shook and shook and finally got that small micro SD card to fall out through one of those larger openings, reinsert it, and I was good to go. All right, with everything assembled, the SD card in there, we're almost ready for the reveal, but let me talk about some things. What would I do differently before I give you the big reveal of the Tedwina? Well, first of all, I would spend more time in design. Uh, I can tell that if I'd spent more time in design, uh, more iterations, I could make this thing even better. And I just don't have time right now. I need to move on. I have other projects I want to do. So at this point, it's, it's open for your feedback. I think all of you could help provide feedback by using the comments below that could help increase the design. Now, I have made some changes since I've printed to my original SketchUp files and exported them as STL files. So you'll notice a few slight changes, modifications, things that make the print better from the version that I have. I would also use a darker PLA. I talked about that already. A new cable, which I've already talked about. I'd like to use a black cable. Uh, I also, and you may have seen in an earlier rendering where I have a logo. We're going to come back to that logo and we're going to talk about that. That's going to add some color, but that's going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to be in the future. So hang on to that. I also want to create some marking materials. Actually, I've already created some marking materials and I'm going to share those with you in a future video. So stay tuned for that. And I really wish I'd had a better quality 3D printer. Now, granted, the Creality Ender 3 was $220. It's a good printer for what I'm doing, uh, kind of a hobbyist, just playing around. But I really wish I had a 3D printer that didn't show those layers as it's as it's built. You can see those layers, especially on that incline plane, you see those layers. Would love to be able to print this thing on a 3D printer that gave me a much better quality. But alas, the Ender 3 is what I have, and it was a blast to try it out. But hey, if you have recommendations on how I could get that done inexpensively, let me know. And finally, it needs four little rubber feet on the bottom. That's an easy fix. I just didn't have any, but it kind of slips and slides as you press the buttons, especially if you're on a slick surface. So just those four little rubber feet would make this a much better user experience because it wouldn't slide around as much. Okay, now it's time. It's time for the reveal of the Tedwino working and next to a Commodore Plus 4.
Well, let's run through an example of using the new Tadduino. Let's turn on the power to the Commodore Plus 4. We'll get an initializing on the Tapduino software. Let's go ahead and select something to play. So let's play a game. Shall we play a game? And we're going to play Fingers Malone. Let's go ahead and load. Now it's time to press play. Searching. And this has obviously been sped up. It found Malone. Now it's loading. Again, sped up the video for you. Here's Fingers Malone loading with Nova Load. I decided to not speed this section up so that you could see the loading in progress. That obviously is sped up again. Back to normal speed. And Fingers Malone is loaded. Let's see how quickly it is before I die. Let's see, got work a key here, key there, and uh, I'm dead. Uh, let's try it again here. I am trying to use a keyboard, and I do believe I am horrible using a keyboard. Oh, I don't know how to go up. Okay, enough of that. Go ahead and recycle the plus four. This time, what we're going to do is we are going to set some options. Now, if you're using a plus four or C16, you need to go, go through this option and select the C16 as the machine. I honestly am not sure what this does, but it does seem to give me better stability on the plus four. Let's go ahead and do our famous retro combs print to screen. There we go. And we're going to save this program. So we have save issued and now we're going to go through our record menu. We're going to set this to automatic. That'll automatically create a name for us. And we'll press start just like we would if we had a Commodore data set. And you'll see sped up again as we save that program. Let's list it. It's in there. Let's new. Now, We've got it saved. Let's see if we can play it again. So we go to our recorded menu. It was number three, if you remember. Go back and hit load. Press the play on our tape or our tape we know or tap we know as I'm calling it or Ted we know in this case. Found it, sped up, list it. It's there. It works. It runs. Excellent. So if you get this error where it looks like it's not releasing it, just hit the back button and that will abort it. Sometimes I have had issues with that, but it's not significant and it's easy to get out of. And now we're back to our main menu. I'm really pleased with the Tedduino and I hope you will agree that it just hits those design cues just perfectly to where it sits nicely with a Commodore Plus 4. I really wanted to capture the spirit of those fins and I think I did it, as you can see on the back of the Tedduino. Another feature that I wanted to focus on were those buttons. I wanted those buttons to be reminiscent of a data set, but also I wanted those arrows to be reminiscent of those wonderful cursor keys on that plus four. Okay, everything you need for this project is going to be at stephencombs.com slash tedduino-1. I'm also going to be creating a supplemental resource page, so you'll find information about that on that companion website as well. That'll be coming soon. Got a lot planned. We got some more work to do on our Tedduino. But I also need to get back to my series on the Commodore Plus 4. So I'll be going back and forth between those, but they work so well together. I think you will agree. Hopefully you enjoyed the Tedduino. You've got some ideas. Maybe hopefully you want to build one yourself. And again, I'll have all the resources you need, the STL files at the companion website, along with some additional instructions and information that was not included in this video. And again, I mentioned earlier that we need to add some color to the project. Uh, you may, uh, again, have seen that logo. We're going to talk about that in the future video. So speaking of future videos, I need you to make sure that you go down below, you hit that little subscribe button, you hit those alerts, you get your notifications, you leave a comment, you thumbs up. Man, that's a lot of stuff you have to do down there. But you know what? I'm not asking you to pay me. Just go down there and click a button. So make sure you do that because you won't want to miss my follow-up videos to the Tedduino project. 
I mentioned earlier that we have some color that we want to add and I'm going to be adding the color, the cable and some of those other things that I talked about in a new series I'm calling Fast Load and uh, it'll be the retro combs fast load so think of it as fast loading from a disk drive from a 1541 right with a flashy little border and everything i'm going to be adding some additional information to the tedwino using that fast load series so i hope you enjoyed the tedwino project and for now retro combs out <laughs>